Hey, this is Lewis from the Dolly Rots, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Good, been a long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it's been a, lot, a little time for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to think. I don't remember when you guys were here. You guys showed up here to cook something. Yeah, we did. Um, hey, hey, <laughs> we we made uh something with a lot of eggs and uh flour. They were like these, like I don't know, I don't know what you even call them. They're like macaroons or yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> that was a number so, of years ago, though, right? Um, it must have been like 2019 or 2020. Wow, you know, because we were we were touring behind. Um, I think Daydream was just about to come out or something like that, or like wow. it had just come out. So yeah, that was, yeah, it was a while ago, but you know, that was one of the last tours we did <laughs> yeah. before all this happened. So, so yeah, well, it doesn't to, seem that. Long. No, but good to see anyway. And good to see you still out yeah, there yeah. doing it. So yeah, 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 of course. So uh, you guys, you just finished up a, a run or at least partial tour, didn't you? Yeah, we did the first leg of the down the rabbit hole uh, run. So it's our first that was our first like kind of longer tour in three years. What was uh, it like so, being out there? Yeah. Man, we had we didn't know what to expect because we didn't know if people were going to be like wanting to go out to shows or, or what. But, dude, people are ready to go. It it was like attendance was up everywhere. The energy was really good um yeah overall yeah yeah it just it felt really good to get out there and see that people want to see live music i mean i imagine the energy is insane because even as a fan you know not a musician i'm itching to get and i've been to a few but you know itching to get to those shows because that's part of it's been a part of my life for so long so when it's taken away it builds up so the energy exchange must be insane oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's like like for us, it's like we remained active through the pandemic. Like it was like Kelly's got her radio show every morning. She's got a serious satellite radio show. Um, we played like online shows on stage it like we we just kept going, you know, doing what we could do, because I mean, it's all about that kind of back and forth and not having that be a part of our like agenda was just, you know, it was, it was we just had to adapt, you know, so. And yeah, I mean, I'm glad we kept going. Yeah. <laughs> so how does the, uh, did you take any different precautions being out on the road or how do you prepare for like posts, whatever post nonsense, I guess is a good word. Or do you just, yeah, you know, we did a couple short runs last year where we were super worried about, um, you know, everyone masked like testing and all that stuff. And then our whole family got Omicron in January. <laughs> oh, wow. So, and practically all of our crew did as well it's like everyone we know got that strain and so we kind of went out the, with the mentality of like all right well we're, we're at least we're vaxxed and boosted and omicron <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know? so it's like we can be a little a little more i mean even the kids got it so um we can be a little more liberal and so we kind of just took advantage of the this might be a little window <laughs> Right, <laughs> you know, we got those sweet, sweet antibodies, so let's use them. Um, so we were more relaxed about it for sure. It's like you know, setting up, getting there, doing the the thing, and then even like meeting fans after the show, we were okay with that. You That's know? great and, because I know a lot of bands are. It's part of their contracts where they're not doing that. Like I'm going to see Judas Priest here. Um, yeah, two nights from now here in Washington, and. Originally, it was, you know, set up for interviews backstage and this whole thing. And now there's this new they have it in their riders or in their contracts where they're not allowed to interact with anybody outside of the band, the crew, and they go bust to hotel. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with a tour like that, you imagine you're touring with like 50, 60 people. Yeah. And if one person gets it, it shuts the whole operation down. Yeah. And, you know, and they're probably on a longer run, too. Right. So, I mean, we're getting ready to head over to the UK here. Um in a couple of weeks, we're going to the UK with Bowling for Soup and Lit. And that's going to be a tour hey. where we're going to have. Yeah, Lit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I haven't heard that um, name in a long time. Yeah. I mean, they seem like cool guys. We haven't met them yet, 
but they're Southern California. So, yeah. you know, we got, we got that sort of thing going for us, but, but yeah, like that tour is going to be more shut down in terms of, you know, people coming backstage, people kind of being around the tour party. Cause man, if one person gets it, everyone has to like, just stop. Right. So, so that's what you're risking. It's like, all right, if one yeah. person gets like BA2 or whatever, you got, you got to, I mean, you're not going home, but you're sitting in a hotel room until everyone's clear. Right. So, yeah, so that that that's what we're contending with. But, you know, I mean, you just kind of have to risk that if you're going right. to if you're going to head out. It's not like a normal, normal tour where, I mean, if somebody literally breaks a leg, then <laughs> that's right. one thing. But yeah, but now it's like, oh, crap, the guitar tech got uh, tested positive. <laughs> <laughs> right you know kind of root for everyone else so yeah so I mean, we definitely have to be careful i know you said you were busy during you know all these last couple of years but were you able to write music you know that's the one thing that you know we just i think touring informs that you know we always like our cycle for the last like 20 years has been like you know we cut a record we go out we tour behind it for a couple of years and it's during that time that we write because it's like you're getting you're seeing other bands, you're in front of people like you're seeing new things and just being stuck at home with our chickens. It was like not the most inspiring artistic <laughs> environment. You know, we were like homeschooling our kids and like raising pandemic chickens like <laughs> right. am I going to write like a children's country album? <laughs> so. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we have. The good thing is, like, we have a ton of song sketches done. Mm -hmm. So it's like we just didn't finish anything. Like there's like 40 or 50 like ideas, like half baked ideas right. that I think now that we're getting back into the groove of stuff, we'll, we're going to start putting together. And, you know, the rest of this year is going to be the new album time, you know. Right. So, so putting so it out. You, I mean, just so you're a little behind on the on getting it out. But I guess I mean, on supporting it. Right. Because it's been out. But that's still kind of cool that you're able to get out there and, and drum up interest in it. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. You know, what we did was like, like the last, the last full length album was daydream explosion. I think we, uh, we interviewed with you. Right. Um, around that. So that was like 2019. And then we put out a B sides collection in January. Cause it was like, what, am, why aren't we like putting these songs out? Like they're just sitting on a hard drive. Like some right. of them are like 17, 18 years old. And um, yeah, Wicked Cool are, are the label we've been working with. Um, you know, I had just contacted them saying like, hey, do you guys mind if we use a couple of these tracks that we had put out with you guys or not put out with you guys or whatever? And they're like, why don't you just put this whole thing out with us? And I was like, are you sure you want like a B-sides collection? And they were like, yes, we do. Nice. <laughs> so yeah. it's cool. It's a double album, you know, it's like. Yeah, I saw there's 24 tracks on it or something, right? It's insane. Like it's it's so much music that we didn't even realize we had. What was like, it like it was revisiting? Just... What was it like revisiting those songs after you know being away from them for so long? I mean, the progression must be tremendous, right? Uh, yeah, th there's that, and then there's also like um, I remember a lot of these like I mixed them, or they were just like these you know things that we would do for fun. We do we did like a Tom Petty cover, or whatever you know, and it's stuff that like we would do on our own and. I remember being so like hypercritical of it, it of the, some of these songs back in the day. It's like, oh, the snare drum doesn't quite sound right. And now it's like a go back. I play it. I'm like, it was fine. <laughs> like, right. Right. you know, <laughs> you, I think when you're making music, sometimes you get wrapped up in your own head and you start hearing stuff that nobody else is ever going to hear. Sure. It's like, is that background vocal too loud? It's like nobody cares if the background vocals too loud, man. So. I think it was a good lesson for us in terms of like, you know, not being so critical right. and just if something feels good, it is good. And a song is never finished. It's just abandoned all those ideas. It's like just hammer I, those ideas home. Yeah. I guess <laughs> I mean, any kind of art, right. You don't, you don't know. I guess it's the uh, decision of knowing when it's complete and when it's done because even the painter yeah. right, is probably going, well, I need one more brush stroke there, or I need one more snare oh, yeah. here, or I need something. And it's, it's gotta be like, like, if you're like baking cakes, <laughs> it's <Right>. like <laughs> anytime you're making something out of nothing, there's no like end. It's right. just when you decide that it's, 
good enough or that it's done. And so, yeah. So, I mean, we went back and like I had to find like the unmastered versions of all these songs. And but then they all got mastered together and they sound really good together, like as a collection. So and I don't know how that happened. I mean, the mastering engineer is, I guess, a genius, yeah. <laughs> you know, is making great. something from 2003 sound like something from 2020 is like, I mean, it's that's a tough job. So. So 2003, 20 years, you ever imagine you'd still be doing this or making relevant music and touring? 20 no. Years? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, because we, we figured like, uh, I mean, at the time, yeah, I guess we, we thought we'd be doing music, but in reality, the reality of life, it was like, all right, well, eventually we're going to have kids and eventually we're going to have to like somehow join World A to be able to like have a family right. and a yard and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, what would happen was we just kept plugging along and pushing and whatever. And, and now, you know, this is what we do. It's just our we're professional musicians kind of like as a result of not stopping. <laughs> right. So the other interesting thing about that is so 20 years, you've probably got fans coming to shows that are bring in the next generation, right? Oh, dude, it's crazy, especially on this last run, because it was like it was it's been a few years since we since we've gone to a lot of these places. Right. And it's like you'll have people come up to you. And it's like, oh, yeah, I became a fan of you guys when I was 10 years old. Here's my daughter. And they like they look like a regular almost middle-aged person you know like an older right. millennial <laughs> and yeah. i'm like that starts to blow your mind because you're like you're speaking to someone who discovered your band as a child right and then they're Bring introducing you to your child and i'm like yeah that's a, it's a crazy trip man but it, but it's cool to be able to do that because it just means like oh there's another generation that appreciates this music right and because you know as a musician, you're, you're not always seeing that like, like right in front of you. I mean, you, you see tw Twitter posts or Instagram or like whatever. We're not even on TikTok. We should be, but <laughs> there's too many of them. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of see that feedback, but to have it right in front of your face is just, it's mind blowing, dude. So, I mean, I'm just grateful. We're still, that's another reason why I'm grateful. We're still doing it because it perpetuates itself, you know? Yeah. I see that a lot. You know, I'm, I'm obviously going to this Judas Priest show. I'm taking my son as well because he's never seen him. But I know there's going to be a million other people that are going to be my age with their, you know, their teenage kids and exposing yeah. to that stuff for the first time. And, you know, hopefully they catch the excitement because I think music, when it grabs you at that young age, it's with you. It's in your DNA. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The best the best is when somebody has been a fan since they were a kid, because it's like it's it just means so much more to them, you know. And to be able to play a song live and see somebody's eyes just boom, right. you know, because it's different to see it live. You can play it on your stereo or, or whatever all you want. But it, when you see an artist live, like it, it can really I mean, it just all of that emotion, just you can see it just come right, right back. How humbling or overwhelming is that when, uh, you know, when somebody else's brain lights up while you're playing a song? I mean, and at that moment, it it doesn't feel like you like it's your song. It just feels like the song has taken on like a life of its own. And it's just it doesn't it's not you're not really in your body at that right. moment. And and plus, like a lot of these songs, we've played them like thousands of times. Right. So it's almost like your your, your mind is allowed to wander. It's a muscle memory. And it, right. it's almost like you're you're not even there really <laughs> right you know and 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 music has that power man it just kind of becomes an entity unto itself it's not really it becomes less intentional and more like you're just experiencing it at the same time as somebody else is because you're not really you're not really thinking about it right you know so yeah but those are those are special moments man and uh it yeah but getting to see that in front of your face is i mean that's what it's all about I was just talking, yeah. we've been doing podcasts all day today, and I was just talking to somebody else, and we were talking about how music has the power, I think, unlike any of the other senses, to take you back to, like, an exact moment in time. Like, the first time you heard that song, or, you know, you yeah. can picture yourself listening to it in your parents' driveway, in their car, or or whatever. It's it's the craziest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah, I, I fully agree. I mean, it's almost on the level, or on the level of, like, sense, you know, like, sometimes you, like, like Kelly's got this like perfume that she 
used to wear when we were teenagers, mm -hmm. you know, and she still has that one bottle and you can't find that stuff anywhere. It's like this, like, I don't even know what it, it's called a tar or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't find the stuff anywhere. And she has that one little bottle and like every anniversary she goes, she puts a little bit on and I'm like, Oh my God, it takes me right back to being like 15 years old, you right. know, crazy. Um, but, but yeah, music does that. I mean, even when like, sometimes we we have to go back and listen to our stuff to be able to remember the words in advance of a tour because it's mm -hmm. like you know there's a lot of words at this point <laughs> right <laughs> we put out a lot of records there's a lot of words and and it, it even happens with like our own stuff you know it's like i'll go back and i'll play like like something off of you know because i'm awesome or a little messed up or whatever and i'm like dude like that's crazy that that happened yeah. like it makes you feel like that energy from that time and yeah i can totally appreciate that man i mean yeah especially when it when it hits you when you're younger too that's that's when it really that's when it really grabs you so here's one that kind of has nothing to do with uh the dolly routes but yourself it's everyone has sort of or i think everyone sort of has that aha moment like uh the first record they picked up with their own money or or the first record that you bought that is like the one that sent you on a journey so for me I'm into the more heavier stuff. And I just remember being in high school or something and this little record store opened across the street from the high school. And I went in one day and Diary of a Mad Men was on the shelf from Ozzy and the cover intrigued me. But the first time the needle hit, I was totally you know, sent on this journey. It just got in my blood. You have one of those? Uh, yeah, well, I have two. Okay, so there were like two stages to this where like I went from being like a, you know, into like pop music and like you know radio music top 40 whatever as a kid because you don't know any better and i remember a friend of mine gave me a a four non blondes tape mm -hmm. i remember thinking to myself oh what is this this is this is like kind of like like drums and you know whatever it wasn't synthetic i remember sitting on that school bus putting on what's up and it just like i'm looking out the window and everyone's coming out to the school bus from the high school. And it just hit me. It's like, what's going on? You know, because you're I, like 14 years old or whatever. And it just like that struck me as like, what's going on? Wait, what is going on? Right. Like th this world, it makes zero sense, man. Like <laughs> and so that kind of like began the process of like, OK, appreciating alternative rock. And it's like that that led to like I wanted the breeders you know i wanted nirvana it was like and so that that be that that uh began the trans position into like wanting to understand this culture right right like understanding something that was like felt at the time like a counterculture because we were like yeah. children of the 90s you sure. know so it almost had that say, like hippie punk mentality right yeah then a few years later, it's like a, a, in a zine or something, I saw an ad for the Donna's first record, you know, the one that like the poorly produced one with yeah. amazing songs. <laughs> right. And, and yeah, I remember picking that up. And that was the moment where I realized, oh, you know, me and Kelly could do this because it was basically like female Ramones, like right. super simple, two, yeah. three chords. And it was like, you know, that record, they never made another record like that. But that record was like, like textbook definition Ramones with a girl singer. And so that kind of put, put us down the path of thinking, Oh, we can do this too. You know? Right. Like, like the same moment that I'm sure like millions of like other people got when the Ramones first came out where it was like, Oh, if these four guys can do this. I can definitely do this. You know, like <laughs> you don't need to be like a musical genius to make rock and roll. So yeah. Yeah, those two. Those Unfortunately, two Lewis is. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> hey, I gotta go to the dentist, and I'm late. No worries. Good seeing you. <laughs> but I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Yeah, she got a dentist, but you know, dentist appointments were few and far between the last few years. So, like, <laughs> yep, that's nice. We'll that back up good. to normal. I don't have <laughs> anything else. Did I miss anything you want to cover? Um. <clears throat> I don't I don't think so. I mean, I, I think just like if people want to check out our um, our new B-Sides collection, um, people are really liking it. We're playing it on tour. Um, we're going to the UK in a couple of weeks um, and then we're we're planning to go out west in June and possibly up the East Coast in July. 
Oh, nice. So and, so, and so we're going to be active. And then, you know, just kind of like <clears throat> moving into the fall, we'll, we'll start uh, working on a new record. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll continue to make music. That's beautiful. And it's that's, nice. We're on the, uh, we'll on the, I think the, <laughs> uh, the outside of all this nonsense now. So maybe we'll be able to catch you here on in Richmond again or in Virginia. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, probably July. That's the plan. So that would be sweet. Yeah. Well, cool. It was good yeah, seeing man. you again, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, you got it, dude. Yeah, always. Hey, be well, my friend.